Hi, welcome to The Stitch TV Show. I'm Lynn. <laughs> and I'm Pam. We're happy you're joining us today. The Stitch is an online quilt talk show, the perfect soundtrack for your sewing room. You can join us for twice-monthly talk shows, celebrity interviews, virtual stitch-ins, book clubs, and podcasts. You can learn more at thestitchtvshow.com. Our show today is brought to you by our friends, QT Fabrics and InMart. You can learn more about each of them in their links in the show's notes below. <gasps> yes. Yes. I'm just excited. I know. What are you excited about? I I do super duper love the Irish threads. I do. Yeah. Yeah. And so we've worked mostly with the poly. They have cotton as well. We'll have some of those out here for, in a future episode. Episodes, yeah. Example. But they, we, they were our next door neighbors at market. Yeah. And they were super fun. Um, so that was way cool. <laughs> and then... Uh, they were like, well, try our threads. And then we tried them, and we both really liked them. Like, we tried like, them separately. Oh, yeah. So that we didn't know, like, I didn't know what she was going to do with them. And I was working with them, and I'm like, these are really nice. They work. Uh, I mean, great. And we have different sewing machines, and, you know, we're using them for different things. And, um, yeah. So yeah. these Iris threads from Inmart are just super cool. And um, they— and and there's QT Fabrics and what's behind us. So the Pixie Dots line, um, which is something we've talked about before, which is just a great basic because it's an interesting modern print. Now, this is ombre stitches, but um, the Pixie Dots are like the little tiny square dots, like so not a round polka dot. Yeah. A little more funky, a little more edge. Corners. Yes. Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> it's got corners. Um, so we've used the Pixie Dots in a couple of quilts that we've done and that you've seen. And we just, I'm not tired of them. Yeah, I'm not. I, I, and I don't think you can be tired of them. Like, I've even in some other stuff that I've done personally, we've had some of these leftovers, and I've been like, I can put that in this. And oh. so definitely have used them in other things aside from stuff that we've designed. Oh, yeah. You know, so very fun. So what are we going to talk about today? Oh, we're talking about crumb quilts, a viewer request, and then our most used sewing machine feet. So we mentioned the quilt behind us. That's our latest quilt pattern, Awkward Hug. It uh, had come out in a magazine, which has unfortunately since shut down, but we're now happy to uh, put out the digital pattern. So the size behind us I call couch size. It's about 80 inches square. And then there is also a lap size, which is a little bit smaller. Very cool. Awesome. So you can get the digital pattern for this quilt for both sizes at shop.thestitchtvshow.com. So, so, so what you been doing? I, uh, working. Working. Uh, I've been working on <laughs> editing, adding, I've been editing <laughs> videos. I've been working on borders. I know, because you text me like, I hate borders. So many borders. And I text you back, I'm at church, I'll pray for your borders. I was like, yes, pray for me in my hour of borders. <laughs> Because uh, I put six borders on a quilt, <laughs> which is not. I will usually max out at two. Yeah. Six. So six isn't that bad, really. Oh, girl. I know. One of them had one-inch finished squares in it. It's okay. And no. you survived and probably looks great. <laughs> She's like, no, I didn't survive. She has this Well, it's not now. quilted yet. That's oh. the thing. So it uh, it was the latest mystery quilt from Bonnie Hunter. But that the just pictures wrapped. you've posted are Beautiful. Oh, yes, it looks great. I'm glad it's done. I mean, I'm glad the top is done. Again, I haven't quilted it yet because it's it's too big to fail. You're doing that today. <laughs> no, I'm not doing that today. Oh, I thought I'm you I'm coming were. over here to do it. I'm not doing that oh, today. Oh, that's right. No, you're not. New nope. Clementine needs some love over there. Yeah, so uh, I'm taking a little break from it. I'm going to get the binding ready to go, and then I'm, I'm it's a wedding gift. And so the couple's already married. They told us they weren't getting married until next October, so I figure I have a year from next October because of the promised date. So anyway, oh, I mean, right. my is... intention is to get it done in, like, yeah. March for them. But they weren't supposed to get married. They got married. Yeah, they got married earlier, yeah. uh, which is great for them. Uh, and it was, like, an immediate family thing only, so we it's not like we were invited and we right. didn't show up with a gift. <laughs> so <laughs> it's fine. It's always bad news. But now I'm like, oh, now I've got... I've got some little extra time for it. So I get to I get to appreciate that the top is done. Um, and the reason I have six borders on my version is because um, the finished size was about a couch size quilt, but I wanted it to be queen size as a, a gift for their bed. So I had to add borders to it because I was not going to make more of those tiny blocks <laughs> for the middle because it would it would not have ended well. 
So uh, six borders, good times. Good times. Um, all right, so we're going to talk about crumb quilts. Crumb quilts. What's a crumb? Which I honestly had to look up what you meant by that because I don't know that I knew that term. I was like, this means you're eating in bed, and there's quilts. All, there's crumbs all over your quilts. Quilts that catch crumbs. Yeah, I was like, what does this mean? So tell me what you think it means, and I did look it up. But so a crumb. Is a small piece of fabric. Mm -hmm. So my interpretation, just based on how I organize my scraps in the smallest size that I tend to use. For me, a crumb is anything that's smaller than two inches by two inches. Oh, say so now the crumb quilts that I saw examples of, that wasn't necessarily true. Oh, it was not. just scraps, yeah. essentially. Which is fine, but that's yeah. another... Um, right. I think crumb quilts is probably a more traditional term I've, for yeah. something that nowadays we may just call improv piece. Right. I think you're right. That's exactly what it was. So these would be crumbs because these are like inch squares. They're inch and a half. Okay. They're inch and a half squares. I didn't measure them. And then these are and probably really two and a half <laughs> inches. Yes. Those are two and a half inches. Squares. So these would would be crumbs. No. To me, those would just be squares. <laughs> okay. I brought the wrong but stuff. But let's be honest. <laughs> like, it's your quilt. Call it whatever you want. Yeah. So that was one of my questions is what size is too small or what size is too big for a crumb quilt? So the crumb, a crumb by definition, is a small piece that falls off to something else. Like, I didn't look that up before we came, but I'm pretty sure that's what Webster I think that makes sense. Like, toast crumbs, definitely smaller than a piece of toast. True. Definitely smaller than a Cookie quarter crumbs, of a piece of toast. Cracker crumbs. Yeah. Yeah. It's not the size of the full thing. Right. It's significantly smaller. And it's not got to be, like, a specific cut into It doesn't have to be square. squares. So it could be more scraps that I don't have oh, yeah. with me. It could be. To sample. A hexagon. It could be. All right. A pentagon. It could be a trapezoid. Just a leftover something. Yeah, just a bit that's left over. That's big enough that you could get a quarter inch That you're inch not going to throw it away. Or even an eighth inch seam. Yeah. So I probably, so these to me are just scraps. Like yeah. I just throw them in a scrap thing. These I've cut. Um, so do you use your scrap? Well, you cut yours all up into. Yeah, I cut. When I'm done with a project, the the bits that are left, I will cut into a range of sizes. We've talked about this before. We'll link to that episode. Um, I don't remember the exact number off the top of my head. Uh, so the smallest that I cut my scraps into is two inches. And I tend anything smaller than that to be just, uh, you know, do the Marie Kondo, think it's for its place in my life, and then send it on its merry way. <laughs> like, thank you. Goodbye. <laughs> does this bring me joy? Yes. Yes, yes it, it does. does. It brings me lots of joy. <laughs> It's thread. Yes. Does this bring me joy? Yes. I just couldn't go through my stash fabric of going, does this bring me joy? That would be like, the whole wall does. Yes, we're done. Like, that's not. And yet, I'm not going to, I'm going to fail at that. Except I watched the first, like, two minutes of the show and went, oh, no, no, I can't. I, no. No. Well, so, for those that don't know, there's a new <laughs> series on Netflix that um, Marie Kondo, who wrote the book, uh, The Life-Changing Magic of Tidying Up, and then the, the follow-on, Spark Joy, which is about organization and you know, basically tidying. And it's hard to tidy when you got a lot of stuff. So, how do you make decisions on what to let go of? Um, so there was a, a Netflix series that launched, and, you know, I watched it over the break, and I was like, oh, love it all. Now I, I'm just on a binge in my house of, like, just getting rid of stuff. <laughs> I was talking to my husband this morning, like, how do we feel about popcorn makers? We have three different kinds. He's like, we don't need any of them. I'm like, I love you. That's why we got married. <laughs> so I'm going to have, like, empty space in one cabinet This now. sounds like my sister. She has, like, four different kinds of ice shaving machines. <laughs> Snow cone stuff. makers. Because, like, ice is important to her. Yeah. Certain kind of ice. We buy the box of the microwave popcorn, so we don't need accoutrement. Anyway, um, so crumb quilts. Cr back to crumb quilts. Yeah, we've gotten off food. That's easy. Um, I think, honestly, the pattern that I wrote, uh, Crazy Modern, is a crumb quilt. 
because it's leftover bit. Aside from the center, which is, you know, based on a, a charm pack, um, it's leftover bits. And it talks about how to create blocks with leftover bits. Mm-hmm. Um, yes. So, yes, I've, I've written them. I was... After I looked up the definition stuff, I was like, I've written a crumb, crumb quilt pattern. See, I and call didn't realize it. crumb quilts the crazy quilting's cousin. Okay. Because to me— You don't have to do all the fancy stitching on it. Right. And to me, crumbs are smaller than the pieces that you're using specifically in that pattern. Mm. Although many other, like the historic crazy quilt patterns, I mean, there was very small pieces in there. Oh, yeah. So, it, you know, it's based, it's going back to the essence of quilting— and how it grow how it has been used in the years, yeah. uh, you know, of we may do with small pieces that we couldn't use to make a dress, to make an apron, to make it, you know. Right. Well, and I think it's also scrap quilting's cousin. Because it really is yeah. scraps. Now, crumbs um, just don't have to be squares, triangles, rectangles. Like, they could just no, be any shape. Be. And, and so some things to keep in mind as you're sewing them together, as with any kind of potentially off-grain cut of fabric, you know, um, pay attention to your seam allowance. So you don't necessarily need a quarter inch, but you don't want to go smaller than an eighth of an inch because it's not going to it's not going to hold together. Yeah, true. So if you're working with really small pieces of fabric, you can go down to an eighth inch seam allowance. Mm-hmm. Um and it's not a matter of like, oh, gosh, I can't have an eighth inch seam allowance in the same block as a quarter inch seam allowance. Like, no, it's your quilt. Do what you want. As long as you're making sure that it's not going to unravel. Right. You know, after use. Well, and I think some of the crumb quilts can be foundation pieced, which is a crazy quilt technique. Mm-hmm. Um, and not like a printed foundation where you're following a pattern. Like, no, no you just, just a foundation for stability. Yeah, for stability, which helps with the seam allowance. Yes. So... Um, that's a nice little tip there. But I, I just think that they kind of all, those three things, crumb quilts, scrap quilts, and crazy quilts are kind of... They're related. They're very related. And the probably differences in them are minute more than than large. Now, one of the things that I have done, and it's not necessarily crumb quilting, but um, I'm working on... Uh, a donation quilt using scraps of similar colors. So I have, I said, okay, I'm going to use pink in this one. And then I'm, there's going to be some uh, pops of white for a background. And so in my head, and I'll post a picture of it. Ho- hopefully I'll have it done by the time this drops. If not, I will show the blocks in process. There you go. Um, uh, so I know I want to have 20 blocks total. And I want half of those blocks to be some kind of pieced block that looks like a solid color. So it may be all pink string sewn together, or it may be all pink square sewn together, or it may be all pink crumb sewn together. And then alternate with that. So it'll be like a solid looking block with a star block, and it'll be a pink star with a white background. And then it'll just be a four by five layout. And so having that kind of quilt design gives you the freedom to like make a block of a crumb quilt um, or oh. a block that's string pieced instead of committing to a full quilt that's string pieced. I think that um, some of the examples I saw on the internet were, you know, a limited amount of blocks and then sashed. Yes. So that they definitely stood out from. It's not just a mishmash. Right. There's some visual Which is a little clarity. bit more, um, you know, crazy quilt kind of. Those aren't sashed normally. Mm-hmm. They can be, but not normally. You don't normally see them sashed. Um, but I think that, yeah, those were kind of neat. And crumb quilts I don't see with the, the stitching that the crazy quilts tend to have on them. Yeah, for sure. Now, that's um, not to say you couldn't do, like, just absolutely. an impact line. Do whatever you want. But I know that the crazy modern, one of the things that you're talking about is, you know, I kind of talk about how to create the blocks with inspired by the color. Yes, Right, and that's what I think. And it gives works some about cohesion it. to it, absolutely. As well. So it's not so just scraps. When you're talking about the pink, you're 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 letting the color help drive the design, right? Which is, you know, you know, that's a a very successful way to quilt, I think, and piece, I think. So, well, I hope so, <laughs> because it's going to be given away. But let me Maybe. ask you this: so one of our patterns is Belinda. And Pam designed it. And what is neat about the pattern is she takes a layer cake and then you are taught how to cut 
the 10 inch squares into hexagons. And so you have these little extra bits from the edges of the hexagons that are cut away. And then she teaches you how to sew those together. And I would say those are crumbs. Yeah, because I wouldn't have used them for anything else had I not used them in the border for the quilt. So it's Right. So um, you get those in the border. So don't think that a crumb quilt just has to be the whole quilt. Right. I really like that technique that you did where it where it used the you know, the leftover bits of the hexagons and kind of gave you that to look at again in the border. Mm -hmm. It's a really successful quilt. Yeah, now I didn't call those crumbs in the pattern, though. I call them buffalo bits. Because you're different. I know, because I like to make funny jokes out of stuff. And I think of, you know, in ye olden times, like if you were gonna kill a buffalo, that's a you lot of effort. Don't. You're gonna use every single bit. So right. you're gonna, you know, all the different pieces. So and maybe you might not normally think, what could I use for this piece of the buffalo? But I'm like, well, I'm gonna turn it into a border. <laughs> Exactly. It worked. It worked. So, and I think that's kind of a, the whole quilt is not a crumb quilt, but right. it does have that. Yeah. It lends to the design. Yeah, it does. So it can be really successful, even if it's not a whole quilt. Mm -hmm. It could be a border. It could be parts of blocks, not all of blocks. And I think, too, if you're trying to dabble in improv piecing and you're using crumbs for that, it can oh, be a, yeah. a really great hand project too because you just have a baggie of crumbs and a foundation and you're just stitching them onto the foundation. Hmm. Yeah, you could do that. Huh. I hadn't thought of that. There you go. Ta-da. Ta-da. But you wouldn't have to stitch them onto a foundation. No, you wouldn't have to, but it might make you it would. easier for travel, I think. I don't know. Because one of the, one of the, when you, you have a hand project, like you take it to your kid's baseball game or you, you know, travel a right. lot. So you don't have an iron. <laughs> so you have to do finger pressing. And if you're not careful, sometimes you can warp fabric by pulling on it by finger pressing. So the foundation helps with that. Well, yeah, but I don't finger press when I'm hand piecing. I don't finger press anyway. So you would just sew crumbs onto each other. I think scissors would be more important. Just cut off edges that you mm -hmm. need to have straight or whatever, you know, make more crumbs. <laughs> crumbs make more. You know, when you eat crackers in bed, they do kind of feel like they multiply. Crumbs multiply. Not that I've ever had crackers in bed. Ever. I bet you've sung that song, though. <laughs> <laughs> Good old 70s tune. <laughs> I have no idea what you're talking about. Not, I have clearly not had her listen to enough Yacht Rock. <laughs> yes, you have. You can eat and crackers in my bed anytime. I, and I never have to listen to Georgie Porgy again. Oh, gosh, that came on. Oh, oh so for context. Oh, it's a horrible song. Don't well, go look it up. Well, it's based on a horrible nursery rhyme about a boy chasing around girls and making them cry by kissing them. That's not politically correct in this day and age. But anyway, it's, it was turned into a song in the 70s. And it's just basically repeating Georgie Porgy <laughs> kissed the girls and made them cry. And it's just this, it's this very enthusiastic woman with a lovely voice singing about kissing girls and making them cry. I just, it's, it's not a good song. It's a horrible song. It's not a good song. It's, and it, every time I'm in the car with you and you've got Yacht Rock on, I swear to you it comes on. It came I'm on like, this week too. And I'm like, I should call Lynn <laughs> and just play this for her. We like, never have song. to listen to this song again, ever. <laughs> I was so shocked it came on the radio. I like I took a picture of because my uh, car has like a a screen that will show like oh, here's horrible. what's playing, and I, I took a picture. Like, can you believe this song? Just to remind me, change the channel. If this comes on again. <laughs> no joke. It was horrible. Anyway, we've digressed anyway, again, so we're so, gonna bring it back around. So crumb quilts, fun. Didn't realize I did them. I'm glad somebody brought this up so I could like investigate it and we could talk about it. There you go. There you go. Now we're going to take a closer look at Awkward Hug, and we'll be right back. Welcome back. Our next topic is... Feet. Sewing machine feet. I do not care for feet. You don't In care general, for feet. In general, I like sewing machine feet. The only kind of feet I like. I like shoes. Does that help? Ooh. Sewing machine feet are kind of like shoes. Feet coffins! <laughs> <laughs> cool. So, 
I remember Wes talking about we should do an episode about sewing machine feet. And then I thought, did somebody suggest this or did we come up with it? You came up with it. Oh, it's mine. So I better have some feet, right? I I say the word feet so much. (laughs) (laughs) Not a fan. Do you like getting a pedicure? No. I don't either. My, I, I honestly don't either. I am not ticklish anywhere except my feet. Oh, my gosh. And when they scrub your feet, I almost come out of the chair. I'm like, ugh. <laughs> All right. Well, let's bring it back around. <laughs> so these don't freak me out, though. These are easy. These are cool. <laughs> these are very cool. So my most used, I have oh, two most I used I forgot feet. my most used one. The quarter inch one? It's on my sewing machine. Yes. The quarter inch is on my sewing machine. So I don't have a sample to show you. So is your quarter inch foot one with the little guardrail on the side? No. But I know people use that. Mine, my default one has that for my Janome. And then I also piece on a featherweight when I travel. And it is just a foot that is a quarter inch wide. And so I know to line up with that edge. Right. Yeah. No, I don't. That's the one I meant to grab off the sewing machine because that is my most used foot. The next most used foot that I have is an open toe embroidery foot. Okay. So um, this one, you'll notice it doesn't have any bar Mm -hmm. in between there. And this allows me to do all of the specialty stitches. Um, And it's the best for applique. Now, I also have an open toe toe embroidery foot on my list, but mine is plastic, which I think is just how the machine manufactures. Right. I think, yeah. Yeah. And I do do like the plastic because it's clear, so I can for sure see, you know, what's happening, particularly when I'm using it for applique. Like, let's make sure nothing's buckled weird or, or anything like that. Right. So that's probably my second quarter inch, this one. No, see, that's number three for me. My number two is actually a darning foot or the equivalent free motion foot. This one? <gasps> Amazing. Except, yes, except mine is the closed toe. It is a circle. My BSR, um, which on a Bernina, that's a stick, stitch regulated foot that you actually plug in. It's the Bernina stitch regulated yeah. BSR. Yeah. Um, it has a closed toe. Yes. So it's a circle. Actually, it has two or three different ones that you could yeah, put on there. Yeah, I have. So I have the closed toe one, the one that you have there. And I don't know if Which you can one, show the angle of toe, it. We're saying. Show the angle of it because I don't think the camera's picking up. Nope. Hold it up. Like this? Yes, but without your thumb in the way. Well, <laughs> there you go. Yeah, like that. So what I found for mine, um, the the one provided with my machine, the prongs on the end of the open toe point up a little bit, and I found that they were catching thread when I was free motion quilting. Um, now, I will say the default foot for my Sweet 16 is um, the closed toe, but I have used that one. I just I don't particularly care for the, the pointed up prongs on mine. I love this one because I can get... Um, when I'm thread painting, I'm doing it within a hoop, and I can get closer to the edge of the hoop, and I can see exactly where it, that thread's laying mm-hmm. down. So I do use this now, one. Now, the other attachment for mine, I don't know if you've got a sample, is... Um, no, I don't have any attachments of yours. Well, no, it, the equivalent <laughs> for yours. <laughs> okay. Um, where it is an echo foot. So it's a, a plastic foot that is about the size of a quarter, and it's got marked rings that are a quarter inch out I from the center. I don't have one of those. I'll have to take a picture of that. Um, I don't have one of notes. those. Um, and I don't use it that much because what I find is my darning foot and even my ruler foot, which I quilt with a lot, um, is the foot is meant to be a quarter inch from the needle. So I can echo easily by just going against that mark if I want to do a quarter inch apart. Um, another one that I use and we talked about, I think this is the one that brought this whole thing up, is this is the zipper foot. Mm-hmm. So I love the zipper foot because you can get really up close to the edge of the teeth and the zipper. And so right next to that. So it establishes that really easily. So, but I like the zipper foot. Do you use one of these feet? 
in a manner of speaking. That's a walking foot. Yes. Uh, so I have one that is specific to my machine. So the Janome system is called right. AccuFeed. Right. So what makes this a walking foot are these pieces right here, these pieces. And that actually goes in and grabs from the top as your feed dogs are grabbing from the bottom. So it's grabbing the fabric and pulling it. Mm -hmm together and that's what makes it a walking foot well that and there is a black plastic arm on yours mm -hmm. that goes it's over metal but yeah. Yeah, oh metal it looked like plastic from here so that piece actually the fork goes around the screw that sews into the needle and that helps get the timing right so the foot knows when to come up mm -hmm. go down and pull back right exactly yep so this is uh if you're doing straight line quilting um if you're just starting quilting on your domestic machine and you've not done quilting before, wow, this foot is so helpful now, in learning. I think the beginner, this is a great foot. Now, I even have for mine uh, a quarter inch equivalent walking foot. Oh, really? Which is helpful when you are sewing a piece of fabric or two pieces of fabric together and one is just a single piece and the other is heavily pieced. So there is a tendency, um, the more seams you have in um, the length that you're trying to sew, the more likely that it could stretch <laughs> and end up a different size. And Absolutely, I, we've got yeah. a video that uh, is, will be on our channel by the time this episode drops about sewing long borders. And I talk about the benefit of walking, uh, walking feet in that as well. Any other feet that you use? Those, those are my basics. Um, and I will say, um, for a lot of machines, the feet that come with it may not be your preferred one. Right. So let me say that the zipper foot that I got when I bought my machine, I didn't fall in love with because the part that's in front of the needle was fine, but behind the needle, it was wider. And I found that was pushing the zipper teeth out. Oh, and before so, it even got to it. No, after it got to it. So, but it was it was warping it enough that, that I wasn't getting the closeness to the zipper teeth that I wanted. So I did some research and found a different zipper foot that would work for my machine. It was like an alternate from the same manufacturer. Um, but if you have a low shank machine, there are a lot of generic feet that you can look at or some low shank feet will, from other brands, will work on other low shank machines. Now, Bernina is very specific because of how they attach. So they, you, that's, yeah, that's your you option. Yeah, you have to buy, well, they're a knockoff Bernina feet. Um, I can't say I don't have one. I do. And it works fine. But I can see where you don't want to buy them. It's, it's like buying auto parts that are not OEM'd or original equipment manufacturer. Right, yeah. Um, it's hit or miss sometimes without yeah. doing your research. Mine anymore. actually works okay. The one that I bought, um, which I bought a ruffler um, because they're, it, Bernina feet are expensive and the ruffler seems to work fine. I don't use it very often, so it's not a standard foot that mm -hmm. I feel like I needed to, sp I was just trying to do one little project and I've never used it since, honestly. Um, this I did buy and I thought, I'm never, I'm not going to use it a lot. But I actually use it more than I think. And it's a weird looking foot, right? But it looks it's, kind of stumpy. It does. But it's to sew buttons on. Hmm. So it allows you to actually, and there's a, a stitch in my choices in my machine. And it looks like two little dots. And that's to sew the button on. And so you adjust the width. And it sews the button on over this bar. Mm -hmm. So it gives you the looseness of the button so that it's not right up against something. And it's, it's quick and easy. So I've done that for just, uh, you know, adding interest to some of my quilts. So, but so it's for no shank buttons. No shank buttons, yes. Oh, right. Yeah. Definitely. Yeah. Now, the no old school button. way to sew a button on, for those that don't know, is to zigzag. But, oh, sorry. No, no, this is some eighth grade home ec realness from Mrs. Crow right here. <laughs> I don't know this. Go ahead. Uh, so you get your no shank button, which typically will either have two holes or four holes. Right. Now, on a four hole, you will be tempted to do a crisscross. Don't do that. <laughs> no, this <laughs> is not for that. Nice. No. Um, so 
you have your fabric, you put your button on, you put a toothpick on there. There you go. And the, or you could use a skewer, but that usually gives too much play to height. it. Height. Yeah, too much height to it. So when you're hand stitching, uh, typically I do about eight. So start from the bottom, come up and down, and you're sewing around the toothpick. And that, you know, like that foot gives you the play that you need. So then after you do kind of your eight stitches around to sew the button on, then you put your needle through the button. So your needle and your thread come out between the button and the fabric, and then you do around about eight. And that gives you the equivalent of the shank for the button. Right. And then you pull the toothpick out. Ta-da. Ta-da. There you go. So every once in a while you want a button on a quilt or a... Not for babies. Well, That's true. a choking hazard for a baby quilt. Well, true, but, you know, embellishment or mm -hmm. if you want to make a duvet cover and your buttons are in the top or a purse or whatever. So I do use that more often than I thought I would. I don't know. So, Do you have a specific foot for buttonholes? No, I don't. But my machine is automatically programmed and they sew. You can set the width and they sew it. Mine comes with. Oh, wait. A no, no, no. It does come. And it's like a big put, long thing. It's a big long thing and you put the button in it and it measures the button yes. so it knows how. Yes, I do have that. Do I use it? Apparently not very often. Now, I, I will I say used the singer I used to sew on, um, it, it didn't need a specific foot. Uh, and you would just kind of, I would just mark of like, all right, it starts here and it ends here. And you would just sew until it got done. And then you'd turn the dial and like, now it's doing the back and forth at the bottom. And then you turn it, now it's going back up. So yeah. that one didn't. So it depends on your machine. Whether, it totally did. If, if it says automatic buttonhole, then you're probably going to have some kind of fancy footwear. Yeah. And you attach it and then it judges how big, you put the button in there mm -hmm. that you want to go through the hole. Because the hole's got to be bigger than the button, but not too big. Not by much, no. Yeah. Like two Just threads. Just a little. Two threads bigger than So that than it'll the get through, but not, yeah. So there you go. Very exciting. Is it? Yes, it is. That, <laughs> uh, but, I mean, I change feet um, probably fairly often, but I go from quarter inch to open toe. Those are the two I use all the time. Quarter inch to open toe. And then if I'm going to do thread painting, I'll put on my embroidery. I used to use my walking foot all the time. I had to dig it out today. I haven't used it in years. I used to piece with my walking foot when I was first learning because mm -hmm. I didn't understand the whole how it fed through, and this helped me kind of to learn that. So cool. it's a big foot. So You know what they say, Lynn. No, I don't know what they say. Big feet, big don't... borders. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Where'd you think that was going? I barely <laughs> thought it was going Everybody got myself. real nervous in the room. Everybody did, and I was nervous with them because I kind of did know where it was going, and I didn't want to admit that I may know where it was going, and yet you made a turn. I did. So there it is. Well... So, do you have two left feet when it comes to sewing? Let us know. Leave a comment in the blog or the YouTube episode or in our Facebook group, What's Up Stitches? And that's all we have for this episode. Today's show is made possible by InMart and QT Fabrics. Find links to these wonderful companies in the show notes for today's episode. We'd like to thank 77 Peaches and Big Think Productions for helping produce the stitch. If you've enjoyed the show, please like, share, and subscribe. And don't forget to turn on the notifications on YouTube, which I'm told are right down there, although they could be anywhere. <laughs> when a new, I like how you're like marrying me. When a new episode <laughs> drops, they'll let you know. Yes. So if you have notifications turned on, you'll know that the next virtual stitch in is Friday, February 8th at 7 p.m. U.S. Eastern, broadcast live on our YouTube channel. And our next book club episode is February 22nd. My podcast, You Have to Be a Square, is out on Fridays, sometimes Saturdays, on iTunes or Google Play. All those details and more can be found on our website, thestitchtvshow.com, along with links to purchase the Stitch TV Show merchandise and video classes. You can tune in next time for more quilting chat with friends.